In today's gospel, we learn that temptations will always come that will incline us and draw us to sin. And what the Lord is speaking of here is not the evilness of the temptation, but the evilness when we give into it. Because in giving into sin, we destroy our own souls and give scandal to other souls. And so his admonition that sin can be the cause of scandal, and if it is the cause of scandal to the little ones, then it would be better that we had never been born. And so we must learn always and everywhere to be on God, knowing that temptations will come, but we have a solution. And we learn that solution very clearly in the life of Blessed John Duns Scotus, one could sit and talk about all that he has contributed uh, to the understanding of the doctrines of the church and particularly to the understanding of the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception, for it was his formulation that was eventually adopted by the church in explaining the doctrine. But his explanations of the doctrine do not explain the holiness of his life. What truly explains that is that he turned to the mother of God in all things. And indeed, when he feared going to defend the prerogatives of the mother of God and also the prerogative of the vicar of Christ, which two doctrines he was particularly noted to defend, that is, the infallibility of the Pope and the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he would turn to her. He would spend hours in prayer asking her that he have the grace to defend. Many will say that by nature he was an unintelligent man that is difficult to prove, for we know very clearly that when he did spoke, he spoke with the very wisdom of Almighty God and defended the truths of the faith. It is hard to say because he turned so often to the Blessed Virgin Mary, so it is unknown really whether she made up for what he was lacking in nature or simply augmented the great gifts that he was given by nature so that they always were put at the disposal of the Holy Mother Church and in the defense of our Lord and, the most, and his most holy mother. And so he understood so well this doctrine, most especially what our Lord really concludes, that is the virtue of charity, forgiveness of sins, especially because our sins have been forgiven. And so the Lord instructs us that we are to forgive seven times if seven times those who sin against us repent because we know full well that our sins have been forgiven. And so, Blessed John Duns Scotus knew full well the mercy of God. Indeed, his defense of the Immaculate Conception was a defense of the mercy of God, for he understood the Blessed Virgin Mary was entrusted with the entire order of mercy, and so he would turn to her in all things, so that he truly would himself become a vessel of mercy to the world. And indeed, when he defends the doctrine of the faith, he is truly being merciful to all mankind, for, he's, for, he, is his, for he, is his, he is helping us to understand more deeply those mysteries that we must hold and believe. And so, let us learn especially from that aspect of his life where he turned to the mother of God in order that he may increase in all things good, most especially in the grace of God. God, for it was the grace of God that was most important to him, and he went to that channel by which we, by which we are certain of receiving it, that is, the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother. And so, let us turn to her, for without her we will forget that God has been merciful to us, and hence we will not be merciful to our neighbors, and ultimately we will fall into that sin of despair which truly puts our soul in peril and our eternal salvation in jeopardy. And so he simply understood a very simple formula. Stay close to the mother of God and you stay close to God himself. And so let us strive like him to stay close to the mother of God. For in this day and in our age, the first part of this gospel is certainly true. There are many things out there that as scripture describes it, inevitably occur that incline us to sin and so there is much temptation and so in temptation let us strive to imitate blessed John Duns Scotus and turn to the mother of God who will defend us against temptation and in defending us is ultimately helping us to defend 
all humanity because it helps us to stay on the royal road to heaven, that is, the road of grace, and hence become vessels to those who, who lay by the wayside, um, lost, especially in our day and age, in that sin of despair. Most notably, it is noted by our forgetfulness of God. For how often in our world do we see no one turns to God? Indeed, it seems that many do not even give a thought to God. And yet, it is God from whom we came, and it is to God to whom we shall return. And so, let us strive, like blessed John Duns Scotus, always strive to return to that union, that union, or that union with the good God who has created us, so that we use all the powers of our soul and body as Blessed John Duns Scotus did, defending the prerogatives of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of the Christ Child and of the Church, and ultimately receiving for himself that greatest of all rewards, for it was the reward for which all humanity was created to receive the beatific vision of God for all eternity in heaven.